The NASCAR Cup Series race has officially concluded from Atlanta Motor Speedway, and we see a lot of fantastic racing, a three-wide photo finish for the win, and Daniel Suarez picking up his second career NASCAR Cup Series victory. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching NASCAR Cup Series race in Atlanta Motor Speedway and BetterHelp 400. We have quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go and talk about it. So for the green flag drop in today's race, Joey Logano would have to go to the rear of the field. Basically, basically had to do a pass through as well due to having illegal gloves and likely will be facing a penalty. And Chase Lang also would have to go to the rear for unapproved adjustments. I, like I said, I expect Joey Logano to get a penalty later this week. So at the start of the race here, Michael Madow lead the field from the outside of Kyle Busch on the inside, and Kyle Busch got a really strong run, and they were side by side, and Kyle Busch was able to leave lap number one. Then on lap number three, the big one was Strike coming down the front straightaway as Logano was about to serve his penalty. Austin Dillon, I think it was Todd Gillen, came up in front. Then he basically got turned by Martin Truex Jr. And a lot of drivers had nowhere to go, including Chase Elliott, Noah Gregson, Josh Williams, Christopher Bell, Harris Byrne, Bubba Wallace, Daniel Hebert, Ryan Priest, John Hunter Nemechek, Eric Jones, Tyler Reddick, Alex Bowman, Justin Healy, Ty Gibbs, Carson Nosebar, BJ McClellan, and Daniel Swords are all involved in the wreck. To me, that's just a checkup situation. It's a little early making moves like that. I don't know why Austin Dillon was mad at Mark Truex Jr. for that, but that is the biggest wreck in Atlanta Motor Speedway history. So then, you had a couple guys come down pit road, including Joey Logano's service penalty. You also had Chastain, Keselowski, LaJoy, Stenhouse, and Smith all come down pit road while the rest leaders stayed out. So then on the restart, Kyle Busch lead the field from the outside with Lyle Larson on the inside, and Kyle Larson got a great run and was able to take the lead. Then it was back and forth for the lead. Yeah, Kyle Busch get the lead for a few laps, and then Kyle Larson got the lead back, and then Kyle Busch, and then Blaney actually then got the lead from them too. Then on lap 26, a section of caution to the race to come out. When Chris Busher spun off turn number four from ninth position, he just lost it going off at turn number four. How so, somehow no one got collected in that, and that will bring out the second caution of this race. So then during the caution, you have Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Michael Medall, Chase Briscoe, Ross J.C., and Denny Hamlin stay out, including Bob Wallace while the rest leaders came down pit road. And then you had Dan Hammer get a penalty for too many men over the wall. So then on the restart, Ryan Blaney lead the field from the outside of Kyle Larson on the inside, and Ryan Blaney got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the lead. Then a few laps later, we saw some really good battling. Kyle Busch and Ryan Blaney would try to lead for a little bit, and then Kyle Busch got the lead for a few laps, and then Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney actually cleared for the lead and dominated. But then the third cross race come out when Denny Hamlin had some contact with Kyle Busch, who dropped back to sixth position. Denny kind of cleared himself coming down the front straightaway and spun himself out coming down to Kyle Busch, bringing the caution out. Luckily, no damage for Denny Hamlin. So then, Michael McDowell, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, Ross, Shasane, Mark Trickshner, Kyle Busch, Chase Briscoe all stayed out, while the rest leaders all came down per row, with Joe Logano being the first off pit road. So then on the race, sorry, Ryan Blaney lead the field from the outside, Michael McDowell on the inside, and Michael McDowell got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the lead, and coming off the final corner, Michael McDowell was able to win stage number one. So then during the caution, Michael Medall, Ryan Blaney, Ross Chastain, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Mark Trex Jr., Ricky Sanders Jr., Bell Walsh, William Byron all came down pit road while the rest leaders stayed out. Kyle Busch stayed on pit road a lot longer, and Ross Chastain won the race off pit road. So on the restart, you had Todd Gillen lead the field from the inside with Joe Logano on the outside, and Todd Gillen got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the race lead. Meanwhile, Zane Smith got on the outside wall really hard and unfortunately took his car to the garage with a ton of damage after being up front early. I think he had a broken toe link or something, and unfortunately his day would come to an end. The racing got really, really good, but Todd Gillen would dominate this portion of this race. There was nearly a wreck happened lap number 95 when Harris Burton had contact with Blaney and Cinder, but they were able to continue going. Then Joey Logano was able to make a really good run outside and was able to pass Todd Gillen for the race lead. And then we say green pretty much throughout the whole stage. You had green fly pit stops. He first had Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney come down pit road. Then in the next lap, you had Cinder come in. After that, a few laps later, he had Brad Zosky, Ross, Jason, Chris Buster, Justin Haley, BJ McLeod come in. Then the next lap, you had Denny Hale and Mark Trickshner, Chase Elliott, Harris Burn, Josh Berry, and Kaz Grala come in. Then while you had guys like Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson coming in, you had contact between Michael McDowell and Will and Byron, when they got contact coming to pit road, they would get a lot of damage, but no caution came out. Then, you had a lot of drivers get speeding penalties. Josh Berry, Ross Chastain, BJ McLeod. You also then, a few laps later, had Ricky Sanders Jr., Kyle Busch, and Bob Walsh get a speeding penalty, and he saw Eric Jones get an uncontrolled tire penalty. After that all cycled through, Austin Center was able to cycle up to the front and take the race lead. 
Ryan Blaney and Joe Logano tried to make moves and they were trying to pass off center, but they were not able to get up there and get by them. And as they're coming to the end of stage number two, Chris Buescher would get in the outside wall and Joe Logano drifted up the racetrack, causing a wreck for all three drivers where Joe Logano and Denny Hamill got collected and Chris Buescher crashed, bringing out the final caution there and Austin would come off the corner and win stage number two. Then under the caution, Michael Medell would get the free pass, and then Kyle Larson had trouble in the right rear, and Michael Medell also got a penalty for pinning outside the box. So then on the restart, you had Todd Gillen lead the field from the green on the inside with Braggs Austin on the outside, and Todd Gillen got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the lead. A few laps later, there was a little contact between Kyle Busch and Kaz Grawl that resulted in Kaz Grawl spinning out, bringing the caution out. To me, Kyle Busch was trying to fit in the hole. Seemed like it was a little over-aggressive there. He was able to then pass him and get back on the lead lap with the free pass. Then we saw a little strategy for guys like Todd Gillen, Denny Hamlin, Martrick Jr., Brad Kozlowski, Chase Briscoe, Daniel Suarez, and Kyle Larson all stay out while the rest leaders came down pit road. So then on the race story, Todd Gillen lead the field from the inside with Denny Hamlin on the outside, and Todd Gillen was able to get a great run and got a really good push from Martin Trex Jr. Then we saw the lead trade back and forth many, many times. You had Martrix Jr. get the lead for a few laps. Then we saw Martrix Jr. and Kyle Larson battle really hard for the race lead. And then with around 60 laps to go in this race, the next cost race come out when Ross Chastain made contact with Chase Elliott in a furious battle between Bubble Walls. Chastain gets in the back of Elliott, spinning mount and collecting a couple other drivers involved the wreck, bringing the caution out. Chastain made a little bit over-aggressive and got into Elliott. So then we saw a little strategy where Michael Medell stayed out while the rest leaders came down pit road. So on the restart, Michael Medell lead the field from the outside with Mark Trickster on the outside, and Michael Medell got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the race lead. The racing was very, very good at this point, and with 49 laps to go, they were three wide, and then Austin Center sends it four wide to the bottom and is able to pass for the race lead, going four wide, and Kyle Busch got up to second. And as they were in commercial with around 41 laps to go, the next caution race came out when Kyle Larson, Braggs Lawson, and Corley Joy all crashed. Kazlossi had gotten loose, and Kyle Larson and Corley Joy had nowhere to go, and they both were collected in that mess, and forced taking Larson and Kazlossi out of the event. So then under caution, Michael Medal, Chase Elliott, Ryan Priest, Ross Chassane all came in, while the rest leaders stayed out. So then on the race, sorry, Denny Hamill lead the field from the outside with Austin Hendrick on the outside, and Denny Hamill's able to get the race lead. We saw some trading back and forth for the lead near the end of this point with Kyle Busch and Denny Hamill putting on a show, and Ryan Blaney sends a three wide to the outside with 29 laps to go and was able to clear for the lead. And then with 20 laps to go, the next big one would strike. They were basically going four wide going into turn number three with Suarez on the bottom. Chase Briscoe would go up the racetrack and get into Denny Hamlin, where Chase Briscoe would hit the outside wall really hard. And unfortunately, Harris Burn, Josh Berry, Justin Healy had nowhere to go. Because of the big incident and wreck and NASCAR did not want to waste any laps, they would throw the red flag. Basically, Briscoe is just a four wide situation, really nothing you can do there. And to me, it's a racing incident and Briscoe had been a little over aggressive. So then on the second to last restart, you had Ryan Blaney lead the field from the out inside with Daniel Swartz on the outside, and Ryan Blaney got a fantastic run and was able to clear for a lead. And then Todd Gill in the next lap, after having probably the best car all day, would have to come down pit road for tire issues. And then with 11 laps to go, the final caution race come out when Austin got loose and checked up, caused Josh Berry to get really, really tight in the outside wall. He had nowhere to go, and unfortunately, Carson Hosbar and Chase Sully had nowhere to go, and they would be collected in the incident. Hosbar got some really big airtime, by the way. Then, because of the, where the caution laid, Daniel Suarez would be the race leader at the restart. So then coming to the final restart, you had Daniel Suarez lead the field from the inside with Ryan Blaney on the outside, and Ryan Blaney got a fantastic run and was able to clear for the race lead. At this point, it's coming down to three drivers. Daniel Suarez, Ryan Blaney, and Kyle, and Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch was sent it to the bottom as they go to the inside, trying to make a move, and couldn't do anything with it. As they're coming to the white flag, Ryan Blaney would have the race lead. Going into turn number one, Kyle Busch tries to make a move to the inside, and Daniel Suarez goes to the outside, and they are three wide down the back straightaway. Then they go into turn number three. They're three wide, three by three, coming to the checkered flag and to the line, and off the corner, the top three are separated by only seven one-thousandths of a second, and Daniel Suarez picks up his first win of 2024 in an incredible photo finish between Ryan Blaney, Kyle Busch, and, of course, Daniel Suarez. 
What an absolutely incredible finish. One of the greatest finishes, in my opinion, in NASCAR Cup Series history. And what a big shot in the arm for Daniel Suarez to get a second career win today and his first win of 2024. Coming into this year, Daniel Suarez was on the hot seat for me. He had to perform really, really well if he was going to keep the seat because you got Shane Van Gisbergen and, and Zane Smith who are waiting in the wings. And to see Daniel Suarez finally get that second career win, a really good start to the year for him after Kovorchuk crashing out of the 500 when he had a chance there. He did an absolutely incredible job in the win by only 7 1,000 a second. A 3 1,000 actually is absolutely phenomenal and incredible. So mass congratulations to Daniel Suarez, one of the greatest finishes in NASCAR history, and to see him win the race was phenomenal and incredible. I think it's the closest finish between the top three in Cup Series history. So now we'll go ahead and take a look at the race results. I'll give you my score and thoughts on today's race. So Daniel Swartz picks up the victory. Ryan Blaney finished the second by three one thousands. Really great race for Ryan Blaney. Had one of the best cars in the field. Led a lot of laps. Unfortunately, was not able to get the win. But a second place run. Really good day for Ryan Blaney. I know he's probably disappointed he didn't get the win. But the finish second, really good for him. Kyle Busch finishes third. Another fantastic run for Kyle Busch. I think he had arguably probably the fastest at times or maybe the second or third fastest car most of the day. I'm going to tell you, Kyle Busch is looking to have a really big year and to finish in third place, really impressive. Was close to winning. I had thought he had a chance to win after winning the truck race yesterday. Finished third. Very, very impressive. Austin Center finished fourth, one of his best races in a long time, in my opinion. He had one of the strongest cars in this race, making some very, very impressive moves. And to finish in fourth place, really good run for Austin Center, who needs a shot in the arm and confidence. Bubba Walls finishes fifth. Really good day for Bubba Walls. He got involved in multiple incidents in this race and still recovers, finishing the top five. Second straight top five finish to start the year. Got some stage points as well. He was up there near the end of the race, got up there, put himself in the right position, and finishes in the top five. Really great run for him. Ricky Sennhaus Jr. finishes sixth. Fantastic run for Sennhaus to get a top ten finish. Ross Chastain finished seventh. A great bounce back day for him. Got involved with a couple incidents near the end of this race, but still finishes in the top 10. Really great run for him. Michael Medal finished eighth. He had probably one of the fastest cars in this field. Had a little bit of issues in stage number two that cost him a shot at the win. Also, that contact of Byron didn't really help a thing, but still finished top 10. Had one of the better cars in the field. He finished eighth. I'm expecting a big year for front row. Chris Buescher finished ninth. Really good recovery after spinning out early in the race. And Ty Gibbs gets another top 10 finish at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Really saw a run for Ty Gibbs. Harrison Byrne finished 11th. Really good day for Harrison Byrne. Honestly, was in the top 10. Was a little loose at times, but still recovers. Finished in the top 15. Good run for him. Mark Trex Jr. finishes 12th. Saw a run for him. I think he had probably one of the five best cars in this field near the end of the event. Unfortunately, finished 12th, but hey, he survived a super speedway event. Corey LaJoy finished 13th, solid run for him. Kaz Grawl gets a top 15 and 14th place after having issues early. Recovers get a top 15. Chase Sully finished 15th despite having getting involved in multiple instances in this race to finish in the top 15. That is pretty good, all things considered. Happy to see him finish in the top 15. Ryan Priest finishes in 16th. William Byron, after being multiple laps down in this race, recovers, finish in 17th. Saw a comeback day for the Daytona 500 winner. Dale Hemrick finishes 18th. Carson Nosebar, after having issues and getting involved in the wreck, he still comes home with a top 20 in 19th place. And Justin Ely was up front in contention for this win near the middle portion. He finished 21st top 20 with Rick Ware Racing. John Hunter Nemechek finished 21st, decent run for him. Austin Dillon finished 22nd. Denny Hamlin, after getting involved in the incident, finished 23rd, had one of the best cards near the end of this event. B.J. McCollard gets top 25 in 24th place, good run for him. Eric Jones finished 25th. Todd Gillen, who in my opinion probably had arguably the fastest car in this race, finished 26th. I want to spend a minute talking about him. Extremely impressed by Todd Gillen. First two weeks has been incredible. Led a lot of laps in the 500. Led a lot of laps today. Unfortunately, doesn't get the finish he deserves after the damage. Suffered in one of the wrecks. He unfortunately finished 26th. Alex Bone finished 27th. Joey Logano, after his issues, of course, to talk about the glove incident. He was one of the fastest cars in this race. Unfortunately for Logano, he got involved in wrecking issues and had other things happen to him. 
He finished 28th. Josh Berry, after crashing out, finished 29th. Tyler Reddick finished 30th. Chase Briscoe finished 31st after the wreck. Kyle Larson finished 32nd. Kyle Larson was having one of his best Super Spear races I've ever seen him have. He was forming at a really strong level, and unfortunately today, instead of going to victory lane, he finished 32nd. He's never finished a racer, I believe, at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Really tough break for Larson, who finished in 32nd. Brad Kozlowski finished 33rd, made some mistakes on the racetrack, but unfortunately got involved in a wreck that cost him a shot at the win. He had a really good car. He was my pick coming in the race. He finished 33rd. Chris Abel finished 34th. Zane Smith, after his issues, finished 35th. Noah Grayson, after crashing out, finished 36th. And Josh Williams finished his last in 37th place. So now I want to talk about my overall thoughts on the race overall, and I'll give you my score and thoughts on today's race. Honestly, coming into this race, especially after how kind of not good the Truck Series race was, and especially how bad the Xfinity Series race was, I wasn't really expecting this race to be good at all. But honestly, this is one of the best races I have seen in the next-gen era. Sure, there was a lot of carnage and a lot of chaos in this event, but when they weren't having carnage and chaos, the racing was absolutely phenomenal and absolutely incredible. Yeah, drivers making three wide moves. Yeah, drivers making four wide moves in this race, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't work. But I think the super speed package that the Cup Series has had has gotten better and better with the next-gen car, and we got to see an all-time classic finish today. I thought this for sure is race of the year, and I think this is going to be a really tough to top, especially because there's some good races coming up like Kansas and the Coke 600 that I think are going to be in the run for the money. But I would not be shocked, surprised if this is race of the year for me because, wow, especially after how bad the Xfinity and truck races really were, even though the truck race was decent, I thought today's race was absolutely phenomenal and absolutely incredible. But nonetheless, mass congratulations to Daniel Suarez winning once again. My score of today's race overall, I'm giving this overall a 9.5 out of 10. This race is near perfect. I think there were a lot too many yellows for me at points, but I thought this race is absolutely phenomenal and incredible. And to see them get a top, get a really great finish after kind of disaster of the Xfinity race, seeing a lot of drivers run out of gas, like Haley Deegan in this race yesterday, and of course the Fords running out of gas. I'm really happy a driver that deserves a win got it done. A 9.5 out of 10 is my score for today's race. So, that is going to today's NASCAR Cup Series race view from Atlanta Motor Speedway. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, notifications on, and if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my Patreon as well. Link in the description below that, and comment with your thoughts below on today's race. What are thoughts on today's race? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below, and congratulate Daniel Suarez on picking up the victory. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Tomorrow on the channel, we're going to have two NASCAR news videos dropping on the channel in the morning. Then on Tuesday, I should have the entry list video dropping for the Cup Series race in Las Vegas. I'm really excited about that. And then Wednesday, I should have another news video dropping. Got a ton of great content dropping on the channel that I cannot wait for you guys to check out. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.